Assalamu alaikum, Osama Ahmed. Alaikum Assalam. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, Bate. Where are you joining us from? Yeah, I'm uh, in Islamabad right now. Islamabad. <laughs> so talk to us, Osama. What what's going on and what's preoccupying your share your thoughts with us? Uh, nothing much. Uh, the weather is very hot. <laughs> yeah, there's so much going on in Pakistan or up. <laughs> weather ki chinta kar rahe. What is so much going on? Talk to us about Pakistan. What is yeah, what's going on with the politics? <laughs> this just, uh, I uh, I don't I don't by the way I don't know which way you lean, but um I, I, I saw that the Jalsa Imran Khan did was was like super in in Jalam recently and yeah, I don't don't know if you lean that way. By the way, so uh, no no pressure if you don't. <laughs> that's no, no that's problem. okay. <laughs> yeah, I would a random question. I was curious, and then we can switch off this. Uh, I was okay. really curious with the Pakistan thing that you know Imran Khan's party they've given they've resigned, haven't they? they I think like 130 seats or 120 yes. something seats. On Steve did this, so they've resigned. Yes. So the question, so I was curious that how does can Parliament continue if they've got so many seats empty? Don't they? Because how does it? Because doesn't it need all the seats to to vote or to operate? Does it not? Or I, this is probably my ignorance now. But I thought that if that many seats, because if one person, let's say one MP, was resigned or he passes away or she you know leaves the post they usually just do a by election for one person but if you've got 100 plus missing you can't just do by elections for 100 so you you have to just do the whole elections i thought but yeah so what is what is that one question because i don't know if you know the answer to that but uh actually like there is some sort of i think majority like there is uh, a defined number of seats that if uh, this uh, number of seat people resign from, then we will have a full, full election. Oh, okay. So mm. I don't think that current... It's that uh, amount. Okay. Yeah. So we can still operate. Uh, Parliament yeah, can operate so. without so many okay sure that was just a random question i don't mean to drop politics okay. on you no. you're like you're like no yeah, yeah, and this guy's just putting me into <laughs> politics <laughs> talk to us osama what's what's on your mind man what what share some thoughts with us um i don't have anything in my mind basically <laughs> what a mind yeah that's so that is so empty and so at peace Yes. <laughs> wow, wow, I like it. I like it. So, like, if you're, uh, like, if you are okay to tell about like your journey to become mufti, mm -hmm. a little yeah. bit. Yeah, sure. Because I've I've got other videos on it anyway. But um, yeah, I mean, my, you know, it's one of the. It is definitely look. It's the hands down. It is the best thing that ever you know happened in my life because it because it shaped the rest of my life in what it was you know what it was to bring what it was to do what i was to experience it just changed everything so it's amazing you know sometimes we take a step and we don't know where the path will go it's a bit like how rumi says that you just take a step and the path appears it's it's like that and and like the verse we looked at today that allah we have this inner voice this inner intuition sometimes guiding us but yeah i i began my studies a long time ago i began i got really interested it must have been 1997 or something and i was a teenager i started studying arabic i I really I didn't have much going on in life at the time for me so <laughs> so I really got interested and just managed to stay focused because this is another issue today I feel that our attention is so divided 
that and I, I can be a victim of that as well, that I think it's so easy to grab our attention that we then get depleted. You know, we run out of, um, we, we get exhausted. But in that day and age, I didn't have many things grabbing my attention. So I managed to really just lock in with Arabic. And then I, I went off to Damascus, Syria to study. I must have studied there about a year and a half, and then I really wanted to do HIV. And and even that was just an idea that somebody just planted <laughs> in my heart. I um, uh, I was reading some books with somebody, uh, a friend, Stroke Ustad, in Damascus. He was Tunisian. And we were reading Asbab al Nuzul and Jalal al Din Asyuti's book. And and he just made a comment, like he said, you know, this is all good, but really, he said, mm, he said, if a person hasn't even memorized, he just said it, you know, it must have been early in the morning, and he probably was, you know, he just said it, never thought about it. He just said, you know, he said, if a person hasn't even memorized the Quran, then can they ever truly be like a scholar of Islam? He just made a comment like this, like, and you know, it's like. <laughs> I thought, you know what, it hit me that I just felt to myself, yeah, man, like I thought, what? Because I really wanted to become so, like somebody, like really learn about Islam and become a scholar within Islam. I really wanted this and in my heart with sincerity, not with this is way before social media has existed. There is no Facebook. There is no Internet at this point, really, when when I'm uh, I mean, th there is Internet, but nobody's really using it. So this is going like 1998. I mean, you wouldn't have uh, the Internet was invented, but I'd never heard of emails. I don't think the first time I ever came across an email, I think it was 2000, year 2000 or something. But the point is that, so it precedes this time of celebrity dumb, you know, this kind of sheikh celebrities. But I was very sincere. I wanted to be a scholar so I could understand Islam. So his words really hit me. And I thought, yeah, man, I really want to memorize the Quran. I need to memorize the Quran. <laughs> this is what I thought. So Bas, you know, I set off on that path then, and that path led me eventually to Islamabad. I found myself in, um, I mean, there was, you know, there was a reason why I ended up there. I wanted to go to different places, but, you know, uh, Allah wills, you know. <laughs> There's, uh, and so we had our, you know, they say like in Arabic, insan has tadbir and Allah has taqdeer. The, the, so the, point is that I ended up in, um, I don't really remember much of Islamabad now, but from what I remember then, there was a, a place past something called Raval Dam. There was a, a place called Chakshazad or something, model village or model town. And there was this area called nurseries. They used to sell loads of plants and stuff. So I don't know if what it's called now, but there was a, a madrasa there called Darlalum Muhammadiyah. And it was um, it was a branch of Pir Karam Shah Saab's madrasa, and so I, I did my hif there. So it was a, you know it was a humble place, but it had a great atmosphere. Um, they had a great person. I don't you know it was a day that there wasn't social media. I did try to later on connect with them on social media but i don't think they're very active on social media and i didn't have many connections there but there was a person there then i don't know if he's still alive may allah bless him ziyasa and he was really sincere always smiling always you know one of these people and i did my hiv there and then um i wanted to do uh an alim course but I had a condition that I would only do an alim course in a madrasa where the teachers were really fluent in Arabic and they taught in Arabic. And, you know, like I had this because I wanted to always make sure my Arabic was good. My Arabic was already OK because I'd lived in Damascus and for a year and a half and, you know, had that foundation. So um, I had family in Karachi and um, my uncle took me there and and. So he used to run a, uh, a, a Tana. He was um, um, like a sub-inspector or something. And so 
the the thana that he was at in Karachi was in this area, industrial area called Sait. And it's the oldest police station in Karachi, I believe. I believe it's from the time of the British or something. But so next door to it was Jamia Binuria. So he took me there and, and they had this, you know, amazing setup and they taught in Arabic. And so I thought, yeah, yeah let's, uh, they had foreign students and they had loads of, you know, it was, it was a different, because I went from, you know, at that time, <coughs> Pir Karam Shah Saab's place in Islamabad was a very humble madrasa. You know, they, they, <coughs> like we all, they, they didn't have like let's say one dorm for, had many people in that dorm sleeping that was the sleeping area you just had like a, a sleeping bag kind of you know not a sleeping bag but like mr <laughs> you know you just had your talai and you just kind of went to sleep there and they just had fans they didn't have air conditioning they didn't have it, it was a great place but it, it was very humble and jamia benoria compared to that was like huge it was like you know, the separate bedrooms, huge institutes, thousands and thousands of students, air conditioning. There was like so many resources, foreigners. Like it was just, a, it was like an, a, a huge upgrade from what I had got used to. And it was a great place. We had so much fun, honestly. Um, I, I really learned. I, I, you see, I was passionate to learn. So you could have put me anywhere and I would have learned. And so this was a great place. I, I was there, you know, I got on. There were people from the UK. We foreigners had their own section. We I did the Alim course. I um, did Dora Hadith there. I did the Mufti course there. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a blessing from Allah. Wallahi. So many people have asked me afterwards. They wanted to study and. Yeah, I, I do advise, sure, go to these places. One thing great I have to say about both madrasas I was in, you know, when I was in Karachi, I did also take an exam with uh, a Salafi madrasa as well, uh, Jamia Bakr. But I, I did study in their library and stuff, but I didn't study with any of their teachers. So I can't comment on that. I just took their exam. You could just enroll and do the exam yourself, and I passed. But... In the madrasas I studied in, in Pakistan, so one was in Islamabad, uh, Bir Karam Shah Saab's place, which was of a Brilvi denomination, persuasion. And the other was Jamia Binuria, Mufti Naim Saab's in Karachi, side Karachi, so, which is different to Binuri town. I mean, it's, an, it's like, obviously they recognize each other, but it's a different entity. Both of these madrasas were never sectarian. You know, even though they they belong to a denomination, so Jami Binuria is of the Diobandi persuasion. But, you know, in the madrasa, they were never sectarian. Like, I never, maybe because most of our teaching was in the foreigner section. So they taught in Arabic, and because the students were from all over, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Africa, UK, America, Canada. So they weren't, never, they never mentioned once you know, things like bashing another group and saying, you know, those people are deviants or those people. Neither in, you know, Pir Karam Shah Saab's place, once did I hear them say, uh, you know, Fulan Wahhabi and Fulan this. Never. I, I never heard it when I was there. I was there for about a year. I heard once um, Ziyar Saab speak and he said, you know, like when he would address other groups, he said, you know, Hamare Kuch, you know this is not how and he would address them like that you know like they were our brothers who have a different understanding to us and yeah really so this is something i feel once again i'm really you know in hindsight i'm really grateful that obviously i didn't know that when i got there it's just in my experience in hindsight i realized wow actually they never tried to poison us you know they never tried to poison me in both the madrasas, I was always different. And, you know, maybe they thought, because uh, I used to say to them, I'm Maliki. So they used to think, well, TK, you know, it's Maliki, Renado, you know, let him do his thing. So sometimes I never used to join in in some of the stuff they used to do. They never, you know, sometimes at that time, let's say they did certain uh, dhikr majlises and I didn't want to join in. I didn't have to. They never condemned me. They never felt that this guy's a deviant, this guy's a this, that. Never. Um, and even in 
Binoria when I was, uh, you know, I would question them on certain ficky things. And sometimes my my beard was a bit shorter. than I mean, it was a bit more on the sides, but it was, you know, a bit shorter than theirs. And it was like, but they never really ever kind of went to, oh, you know, this guy's maybe one, two people held that view. But generally, the madrasa was very, um, I saw a lot of love and I saw a lot of hope. In both of these, you see one of the Brilvi and one of the Diobandi that I could speak for personally. Uh, even today that um, I've seen, in fact, there was a video just uh, Sheikh Farhan, who's the son of um, uh, Mufti Naim Saab, who's passed away. May Allah bless his afterlife. And that they released some video about uh, what, what Jamia Banuri is doing, what it's launched. Great things, you know, very accommodating. And so... I do feel that these are, look, there's no, um, everybody, you know, if you want to find faults, we can find them everywhere. You know, there's uh, there's an uh, Arabic poem of Imam Shafi'i where he says, uh, That, you see, if a person wants to find, uh, if a person is loving, there is no fault they see. But if the eye is hateful, then faults just start to appear. You know, a, and this is the truth. But so if we want to find faults, we can find faults with everything. But I see a lot of hope in these places. Um, I hope, you know, people can um, see that. And, and I hope these places continue to blossom as well with that message of humanity and love and because it's important, because otherwise, you know, there are some places that some people, they use, you know, religion has been hijacked. And, in you know, you're in Islamabad. I, I get messages from people in Pakistan, in in India as well, that where people have become unfortunately fed up of r religion. It's a shame because, you know, they've never really even, you know, never really even read the Qur'an ever with meaning. So it's difficult for a person to have been fed up with God. <laughs> you know, a person has never, people say Bukhari, whatever, but nobody's read, th these common Muslims have never read this with their own eyes or understood it with their own comprehension. It's just that people have used things and channeled them through a certain lens of sometimes hate or you know they've hijacked the message and and this is what has, has scared and frightened people away from islam and you know that one of the greatest messages of islam really is um and i've got a video on this it was one of the first hadith that i ever learned and it was that yassiru wa la tu'assiru Bashiru wala tunafiru. And it is a Sahih hadith. I mean, this is in, you know, it's in Bukhari and these books that 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 make ease for people in this theme. You know, don't make things difficult and don't scare people away. La tunafiru. Bashiru. You know, bring people in. You know, Jesebi, however they are, let them come. Ahlan was ahlan. You know, it does it doesn't matter because you know everybody is beloved to God in their own way and sometimes it's just we've lost the way you know but again we've kind of lost the way but it's it just takes that realization and i feel that sometimes this door is shut you know as they say in arabic mindun in nas it's shut from people because just because some hearts have turned to stone and they've forced these doors to be shut for people, you know, one is their own choice, but they shut them, you know, to say, Allah, oh, you don't even do, oh, you don't even pray, huh? you know, you don't even keep a beard, huh? you know, you don't even, oh my God, <coughs> she doesn't do hijab, or she doesn't do this, or she doesn't do, you know, you know, it's, it's not our job to judge, you know, there's an, a saying in Arabic, that is uh, mansub to the ulama that that kunu du'atan la qudatan. You know, if you want to, if you want to call, then call to God. Like, be somebody who calls. Don't be a judge. Kunu du'atan la qudatan. Not judges. Not a qadi. 
don't be a be a da'i if you want to you know if you want to call if you don't if you don't you know, if you got nothing good to say you don't have to say anything <laughs> but yeah so these are just some thoughts cool man i hope it's been uh good sharing these thoughts with you sama um you. Uh, you take care stay in touch and yeah if you are on insta uh, send me a message i'll look out for your message there I'm sure okay. Islamabad has changed. You no, know, Kabi, yeah, sometimes in the future, sometime in the future, I'll have to visit Islamabad. Chakkar lagana parega sometime. It will be great to see it uh, at some point after so many years. You take care and we'll speak soon, inshallah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, inshallah. Take care.